We are the Barnabas Fund, and the name Barnabas means son of encouragement, and that's why we exist. We exist to encourage believers around the world who suffer because of their faith. And a lot of churches and a lot of areas and the places that we work, coming into a service like this on a Sunday morning could mean life or death for some people. In Nigeria, there's been a church attack every week for the past three years. You know, we take communion this morning for some other religious groups in the world. That is just the bane of their existence. They literally hate it. Is there persecution in New Zealand? The answer to that would probably be no. We want to think about that question of whether or not we're persecuted. Um, I think that we are to a degree because when something happens, immediately the church is looked at and we're called judgmental. And we are in a position where not often do we stand up for what we believe. And regardless of what the Bible says, we oftentimes just keep our mouths shut because we know that the second we open our mouth, no matter what we are going to say, people are going to think we're hypocrites and that we are judgmental and that we hate people. When in reality, we love people and want people to know who Christ is and want people to know that our God is a God who brings hope to the hopeless. There are so many more people being martyred for their faith in this, in this time than any other time. It says a Christian is martyred every five minutes. Every five minutes. That's unbelievable to me. And people as they walk into their home groups or into their churches are getting bags of urine thrown at them. In places like Saudi Arabia, it's illegal to have a cross anywhere. Whereas we could have crosses everywhere we look. And that's the reality of places like Saudi Arabia, or where if you were to actually convert somebody to Christianity, you would be killed. In some of these places, crucifixion is still something that exists. We are living in a time of terror right now. We are living in a time when the church has got to be strong. That even though we live in New Zealand, we have got to be, our hearts have got to be one. The fact that we are brothers and sisters with these people who suffer in these countries, just because we sit in New Zealand and we can care about the people around us, but it's so important to care about the world outside of here. The Bible says when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. When one part rejoices, we all rejoice. We have to remember that they are brothers and sisters. Today we get ready to, to send out our brother and sister to go into these countries, to be the feet that takes the good news, the, to be the feet that shows people love and hope. When we pray, it brings hope to hopeless situations. Those Christians who are stuck in jail cells or in sometimes in Eritrea, they are stuck in containers, metal containers, and that's where they live. So in the summertime, it gets blazing hot in these containers. In the winter, it's freezing. And what keeps these people going is prayer and knowing that people are praying for them. Pakistan is another place where you can be a Christian, but man, to be a Christian there is a very hard, hard situation because oftentimes there are so many people that hate you just because of your faith. In this situation, it was a terrorist group that attacked a, a playground. They don't care how young or old you are. What they want is to cause fear. But you know the thing is about God? He is a God who is faithful. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He is the one who's in control. Regardless of how chaotic the world seems right now, our God is just, and He will bring justice to these situations. Um, this happens a lot. Over 750 young girls are kidnapped and raped regularly. Young girls are afraid to go to school because if they go to school, if they leave their homes, oftentimes they will be kidnapped. Can you imagine having that fear for your daughters, for yourself? Christians have nowhere to go in the Middle East. Nowhere. Christianity is, it's literally been called genocide, what's going on. So when you don't do that, don't tell them you're going to pray for them unless you actually do. Make it something that you commit to doing weekly, daily, monthly, set aside a time to pray for them. Um, I'm proud of you guys as a church. So thank you for being a church that sends out people into the mission field. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few.